Welcome to Android Authority on Air, the original Android Hangout show on Google+. I'm Derek Ross. And I'm Scott Anderson. And this week we're joined with returning guest Dan Charlton of Tiamat Kernels, who hasn't developed a kernel in a while. I don't know if I'm going to have to change my intro here soon for him. He's waiting for all the Intel processors to hit the U.S. <laughs> oh. and, and, and fellow Android enthusiast Johnny Frank. John, John Franklin, welcome back. Welcome back. What's up, there, everybody? All right, so Scott, what are we going to talk about this this week? Well, we got a lot of Android updates for this week. Uh, this week in general has been a lot of big news. Um, Android ecosystem stuff. Um, we are going to be talking about some device updates coming to y'all and some rumors that we're going to be going over. And then uh, we got a lot of app updates from Google in particular and other uh, providers as well. We're going to go over some rootin' and ramen stuff, and then we're going to finish up with some uh, patent wars, Daniel's favorite section. <laughs> All right, so, so let's hit the big news of the week. So Android 4.12 was released two days ago. Um, AOSP was released, so those of you that are into rootin' and ramen, you'll, you'll be excited to know that. Um, just real quick, uh, if a few notification uh, changes were done with uh, with Android 4.1.2. There are a lot of bug fixes, you know, uh, you know, stability, performance, yada yada yada. But uh, the major thing that a lot of people are noticing that you can do uh, notification expansion and contraction in Jelly Bean now with just one finger. You don't have to sit there and figure out some weird way to like pinch and zoom on like a, a tiny little section of your screen. You know, you don't have to fat finger it anymore. You can just uh, you know slide up and slide down. So pretty neat. Uh, There's some Wi-Fi fixes uh, on enterprise networks uh, that uh, use uh, WPA enterprise encryption and a few other things. Uh, you know, a lot of under the hood changes as far as uh, we can tell so far. The Nexus 7 was the first device to receive that over the air update. So if you haven't gotten it yet, you know you can either spam your check now button. You can try clearing the, uh, the cache for, and, and, and force stopping the Google Services Framework app, or there's a whole, a whole bunch of ways you can do it. You can manually download it and, and flash it yourself. You can ADB sideload it. There's all sorts of ways. So uh, you know, go ahead and check our website on various ways you can manually install that if you did not get the update yet. Personally, uh, I have an unrooted Nexus 7, and I've tried every way possible, and I've yet to see it update. That's I actually ADB sideloaded it uh, as soon as soon as I found that download link. I downloaded it and and flashed and and said in ADB sideload. It's a real simple. Way. Uh, for the, those of you that don't know, um, ADB sideload, since I've said now like ten times, is uh, you, you you download the over the air update patch uh, you know, file, it's like 35 meg, uh, you download that directly from Google servers, you reboot to recovery, you, can, you, know, you don't need to be rooted, you don't, it's completely stock recovery, you, you reboot, you plug your, your USB cable in, you type, uh, actually but before you even type anything, you, you need to go to the stock recovery, you, you select apply, supply, uh, or apply update from ADB, and then you open up your command line interface, and you you type ADB sideload, really long file name or whatever you read, you, you save the zip file to, hit enter, it transfers it to your device, uh, it applies the update, and a few minutes later it reboots. It's extremely simple. So Scott, you should try that if you're tired of spamming your button. Might have to try that, and I might just wait until Google actually pushes it to me because I kind of want to know how long it'll take for Google to push it to me, as opposed to waiting for Verizon. So I'm I'm just kind of curious about that. Wait Can time. Tried clearing the uh, app data yeah. cache. Yeah, I mean, there's all sorts of neat little ways to get it. All right, so besides the Nexus Seven, the the Galaxy Nexus. Uh, HSPA Plus version you can get from the Play Store, the 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 Tacju version. The factory images are now available for that, uh, which are JZ 054K, as well as the Yakju version, which is the the original um, global version of the HSPA Plus uh, version of the Galaxy Nexus. That was actually added tonight, a day later, and 
just a little bit ago, actually, the Nexus S was added as a factory image too. So if you're you're running stock or or not, actually, if you're rooted too, and you want to get those on your GSM Galaxy Nexus or your Nexus S, you can just download the factory images and go ahead and, and flash those if you're you know, if you haven't had the update pushed to you yet. There's all sorts of ways to, to manually get it. Um, yeah, so Verizon Galaxy Nexus, Sprint Galaxy Nexus, not so much. Um, let's see, two days since it was released, the Nexus S and the Nexus 7 and the Galaxy Nexus GSM variants got it within two days. Um, I'm not going to hold my breath until the Verizon or Sprint version gets it. That's just me, though. I don't know. You guys can do it. <laughs> It'll be like a late Christmas present. Well, I'll tell you what. We'll, we'll talk about how you can get it other ways in Root and Ramen here a little bit uh, a little bit later in the show. Um, on a related note to factory images, the Nexus Q uh, has its ICS image actually posted available for your rest restoration pleasure if you decide to hack the heck out of it. You can now get that back to, to factory Nexus Q goodness. Um, Every single Nexus device has now Android 4.1.2 binaries available. Basically, you and I really don't care about this unless you're unless you're a ROM dev. And then, then you know you're going to ROM dev all the things. You're going to download the latest uh, binary and slap them in your custom ROMs, which you know we'll get to that a little bit later in the show. Um, moving on to more Android news or less Android news, depending on how you want to look at it. Or not too. <laughs> Yeah, well, remember last week on the show, we, we were all excited about all these awesome things coming to Android uh, 4.2. As and we it, typically are about new Android releases. Yeah, yeah, so we were jumping and down, up and down, high-fiving, you know, we are doing webcam NFC, all sorts of crazy stuff. You know, we were, <laughs> we, were, we were really excited about all these things coming. Well, it turns out that, that they, they were fabricated, uh, Android and me... That's my phone. Android and me um, were the Epic. ones to originally report that. It turns out that their source was unconfirmed and it was a hoax, uh, a, a trickster playing a big hoax on the Android community. They actually submitted the story to a bunch of different uh, the Android sites, and only one of them took the bait per se. And you know what? That that sucks. But hey, we got to find out about Project LOL, which JBQ and Dan Morell uh, let let us know on Google Plus that uh, you know Project LOL was fully underway, per se. Uh, it, was, it was good for a, a letdown and a laugh at the same time. Uh, you know, who knows, maybe some of those things will come to fruition. Maybe not. We'll, we'll find out here. I guess we'll find out here probably less than a month uh, if, if rumors are going, you know, if rumors are going to develop on time, uh, which we'll get to that later in the show after we talk about some, some app updates this week, Scott. Okay, so we move on to our app updates and uh, new releases. So Google+, Plus, the mobile app got updated. Google+, Plus page owners can view, post, and comment from mobile. Uh, this is nice for companies or people that have a whole bunch of pages um, that want to represent their brand and do it easily through a mobile device, which they really haven't been able to do before. Um, also, you can discover new people and topics. Uh, it's a new section if you swipe to the left. Uh, it's called Find People. Uh, it's kind of a nice setup. Um, needs a little bit of work, I think, but it's nice for the most part. Um, also, you have a new home screen widget, and this home screen widget has been redesigned so many times. Um, I don't remember uh, when it wasn't even in the app, but it, it doesn't have a scrollable it's not a scrollable widget. You go from post to post, and you can't go back. It's very odd. And there's only so many of them, right? So, yeah. Scott, have so, you tried to manage a page feature yet? I have not. Can I tell you how awesome it's not? Oh, is it not? No, so you would think it would be awesome because we've wanted this ability, those of us that have pages that we would like to manage. Well, yeah, you have to sign out of your account back out to the your the home screen then when you go to relaunch the app it says hey do you want to sign in as your email address you know, your gmail account or add a new account so now when you click your email address like when you first very first launched google plus it comes up so what do i want to do do i want to 
log in as me, or and then it lists all of your pages. So every single if you you know administrate multiple pages, ah, oh, that's such a huge pain. But even for one page, you have to sign out of your account, close the app, relaunch it, sign back in, type all your stuff, view your notifications. You have to do page. that every time. Oh yeah, yeah. every time. And, the, and and now here's what's neat. So instant upload. One of my favorite features of, of the Google Plus app. And your pictures automatically get posted. Well, whenever you first launch the Google Plus app, brand new spanking app, new app, you have to go in and say, I want to turn on instant upload. Yeah, you have to do that too every single time you sign out to manage a page. So if you use instant upload, it's not enabled whenever you sign back in as, as, as Derek Ross. You know, I have to go in and uh, return on instant upload every time. Okay, I mean the function, the, the the functionality is there. It's just you know slowly getting there. I mean, okay, is it so better? This should be done like Gmail, where you got it packed into the spinner up top, and you can just swap, nothing? swap accounts. Yeah, that's yeah. You're right, John. That's Gmail's what we, got the best setup. We need, for that, we need really. a Gmail type functionality. Is it better than nothing? Yes. In a pinch, if you have to make a post from mobile, will you will you do it? Yes. Will it suck? Yeah, but if you need to do it for mobile, you couldn't do it before. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it's bad, but yeah, at least the functionality is there, right? Yeah, that's very true. Uh, next, uh, rather large and app that makes me very happy, and I know it makes Daniel very happy too. Um, Google Play Store um, got updated to 3.9.16. So if you guys remember back in August, that's when it was updated last. So in this new version, you can go, if you go into um, My Apps, and then you swipe over to the right side, so All Apps, um, you can multi-select apps by, by long pressing one, and then tapping any which, any more apps. So just like you would select many uh, emails in Gmail, uh, it works the same way. And when you select, let's say you select 10 apps, and they're not installed or purchased apps, you can remove them from your history. So this has been nice because if you go into a, 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 an app that you want to try out, but you don't want to use it for a long time, it will stay in your history, but this way you can get, a, get rid of it, which is really, really nice. Yeah. And uh, kind so of cleans up your Play cluttered. Store history. It gets very cluttered. Yeah. Especially with those like you know nonsense apps that you just download and it's like oh nope don't want that. Yeah. Um, next is basically it the Google Play Store keeps track of your location in lists. So let's say you're in the My Apps section and let's say you want to go over to the All Apps. Well, if you're going down the All Apps and seeing your history and then popping back to your installed My Apps, it would never remember your location in the list. Yeah. You'd always have to scroll back to the bottom when you're all the way back down. Yeah, through all of the clutter. Yeah, people who use the Play Store a lot and download a lot of apps, you know what I'm talking about. Download the new one, and you will love it. It was infuriating. Yeah. Um, also, app, uh, yeah. Uh, also, the app update notifications are now expandable, which is nice, and also the. Um, the images for an app when it's downloading has changed, and also when you have downloaded an app and it is in your notification bar, when you pull down the notification bar, it actually has a big icon for the app on the left as opposed to that generic um, image that was there before, which is nice and it adds some color to the installed apps, which it didn't have before. And then also... Um, yeah, pretty much it, it adds a lot of functionality, um, and a lot of stuff in the code is kind of leaked, like uh, wish lists and all this new stuff that is coming and some stuff with malware and a lot of things to come for the Google Play Store. Against which is, malware. Against malware. Uh, uh, yeah, against not malware. But <laughs> Get the new Play Store. It comes with your very own malware. Against malware. Okay, uh, Derek was... What was going on with uh, Google TV? Yeah, so so speaking of uh, devices being updated to you know with a new version of Google Play, Google TV is following suit, and they actually got a whole bunch of Play updates starting Monday. Um, Play movies 
some devices actually got a little bit early last week. We may have talked about it last week, but uh, Play Movies is now available for, for Google TV. Play Music as well. Now, Play Music, once again, it was available a while ago, but not on all devices. So, basically, Google TV is Play Storing all the things. Starting with Sony devices, a revamped version of Google Play is rolling out. All devices will eventually get it. So, if you have a uh, you know, Logitech review um, or the Vizio CoStar, you can look towards the later end of this month to get those updates. But right now, those of you that are getting it, um, it's basically like the Play Store version that's on your phone or on your tablet versus, you know, like the, the current or the old version didn't look anything like the Play Store that you would use on your phone or your tablet. They're completely different looking. Now it's the same app, basically. You know, the it looks exactly the same. You know, there's different, you know, the, the same type of categories and, and everything. So it they're really integrating Google Play into into Google TV. So if you have purchases of movies that you've bought, through Play, you can you know, watch them on Google Play, uh, movies and, and TV. Uh, so, so it's great. Uh, um, I've tried it out. Uh, you know, I love it. it. It's coming along very nicely. There's, there's still a few things, you know, personally that I have issues with on the CoStar, but it's getting better. And there's a rumor that it'll be getting better soon. So, you know, that that's good. Uh, I'm happy to see Google continuing to update Google TV and make it better. Okay, so moving on in app updates, uh, Dropbox got an update to version 2.2, and basically what's new in this one is you can look at your pictures and videos in a better way. Uh, basically, they've introduced a new photos tab. Uh, you can look at all of your photos and videos that are uploaded, and it's very fast, and it's a very easy way to see all of the camera uploads that you've um, enabled on your device if you have. Um, and also you can up, uh, uploads have moved into the menu in the file browser and uh, a lot of under the hood uh, things have been uh, fixed as well. Next we have Zagat, um, Google's acquisition that they made um, earlier, was it earlier this year or it was, late yes, last yeah, year? Yeah, this past year, this summer. Okay, so this summer um, they purchased Zagat which was uh, uh, a... Farmers this summer. They've had Zagat for a while. It was over a year, I think. Okay, so basically, Google, they came out with a Zagat app. Um, it's basically like Google uh, Local in Maps, but uh, this app is just a standalone app. Um, my experience has been okay. The only bummer about it, and I kind of understand it, but you need a Google Plus account in order to use it. So I think a lot of people will, you know, that'll rub people the wrong way because if I need a Facebook account or I, if I need a Twitter account in order to sign into something, that makes me angry. It makes me angry only because I don't want to use Facebook and Twitter and would prefer to use Google+, Plus. but tons of people are happy with those things. Yeah. Right, like but, the people yeah, but, I mean, all the time. integrate their own services into their own apps. I mean, yeah, like I like the, I like ones where it gives you a selection of options and you can use your Google credentials. I mean, I don't really see that as being very different from your Google Plus account because it's the same thing. Yeah. But it's pulling all the data and it's watching all the data from Google Plus local, and that's what it runs off of. It's actually not like a true standalone product with one. Of, remember when they updated the privacy policy that they would share information from product to product? Yeah, I don't think that this Zagat or Zagat as a company or a uh, mobile app applies to that. I wouldn't know why I wouldn't, to be honest with you. Uh, because it was a new acquisition and it was made before that. So, so it's not written in there. Well, speculations are speculations. I, 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 I wouldn't see why it wouldn't uh, wouldn't be included in that. But hey, I'm, I'm not a acquisition lawyer and I don't read terms of service. I just blindly click accept and agree like every other dumb American that doesn't read Okay, them. regardless, I like the fact that Google's pushing Google+. Plus. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, next app update uh, is Foxfy. Uh, if you guys have a Galaxy Nexus from Verizon and it's not rooted, I know a couple of people that do, You and, and you want a uh, Wi-Fi tether. What? I said, and we feel sorry for you. Yeah, we, we, we do feel sorry for you. And if you want a way to... Tether, Wi-Fi Tether to your tablet or some other device, 
um, without root, then Foxify is the app for you. Um, it actually didn't push an update to the App Store or to the Play Store. It just changed in the code somehow on their server. I don't know how it changed. Um, yeah, yeah, I saw the, the developers like, huh, I didn't do anything. Yeah, <laughs> but, but, but now it works for uh, Jelly Bean devices. It works now. Yeah, so Jelly Bean devices, good news. Uh, and then, uh, Jonathan, what happened with uh, contacts? They finally fixed the contact sync on their end where it doesn't continually feed you low-resolution photos, even though that you've updated it. You know, if you go to Gmail and go to your... Uh, contacts in Gmail, the image that you upload now will not be compressed down and pixelated anymore. It will be the high, you, your contact sync is finally fixed on their end. So you clear out all your contact data, whatever, you're going to get a high quality image now where it's been broken for, we've been complaining about that for years basically. Yeah. But, and you want to, uh, the interface nice to see. that looks exactly like the Google Plus image upload to change your profile or banner picture. It's yeah. not that old, you know, 2005 yeah, you can, interface. You can, you can drag and drop now. You have an interface yeah. pretty quick and easy. Cross your so. picture and everything. You know, it, it's it, it's it's the same thing that we use in Google Plus, and it, it, it's nice. I, I've tried it out. Is it 720p? It, uh, I'm not exactly sure the resolution, but it's what, what was the old one like 96 to 96? Right. Yeah. So anything is anything is an improvement. It was. Yeah. You see somebody's face pop up on your. Phone and it's just right. like this big well, pixelated blob coming at you. Devices are nowadays. Well, not, well, not even devices. I mean, the sheer file size. We have LTE networks that can deal yeah. with that right now. So I mean, mm -hmm. you know, why not? Plus, you cache that locally anyway. Yep. Which doesn't have expandable storage, but yeah. They did um, store the system in data partitions, so it doesn't actually hit your storage. So stop your whining. So w was this a server-side push, or what was yes. it? Yes. So okay. you've been able to store high-resolution pictures in your contacts, either on the device or in you know in Gmail or otherwise. Yeah, but then when it synced, it, it died. But when it synced, <laughs> their servers <laughs> cut it back down. Yeah. Gotcha. yeah, so you were cool as long as you never synced your contacts. So <laughs> yeah. Which well, no I mean, Google device is... Yeah. All right, so let's move on to some, some device rumors. So, uh, Scott, uh, I hear I hear uh, Samsung is getting making things smaller. Well, yeah, this isn't really a rumor. Um, it was kind it was of announced. announced. It was announced today, right? In right. Germany, yeah. Um, basically, yeah, Deutschland. Um, Samsung released uh, the Galaxy S3 Mini. Um, kind of a lackluster. Um, they kind of talked it up I to be. A S3 equivalent, but this smaller. So basically, what it has, it has a dual core, one gigahertz processor, has an 800 by 400 uh, resolution uh, Super AMOLED display, um, VGA support for the front camera, five megapixel back camera, um, Bluetooth 4.0, NFC, eight gig or 16 gig onboard memory. It does have a micro SD expansion slot. Has a 1500 milliamp hour battery, which I don't know how that device is going to survive. Um, it's of course, display though, it'll last a good low in low resolution. Uh, yeah, and another yeah, thing, uh, it, run, it runs Android 4.1 Jelly Bean, and I think a reason why the battery is so small is I don't think it has LTE. No. So that no, might not. be the. This I, is, I mean, they announced it in Germany for a reason. This is not an American spec device. Because those bands are also AT and T only, barely. Yeah, I are, are, I wonder if they're going to be bringing this to LTE networks. I I would assume I that they need a bigger battery. Whatever processor that is for a 1.5 gigahertz dual core Snapdragon, then they're, that's all they need to do. So, out of this release, what do you guys think? Do you guys think Samsung talked it up a little bit too much, or do you guys think that this is a okay device. I think this is dead on arrival in America. It no, doesn't I, I don't, I don't see a huge and it doesn't have LTE, right. so neither none of the other three carriers are going to take it. Okay, if if somebody was looking for a mid-level phone at a fifty dollar to a hundred dollar price range with a mail in rebate of fifty dollars. Okay. For for to 50 take abroad. For fifty bucks, you know what, get the 
get the uh, Razer M. But if you don't want the Razer M, then uh, there, there you go. The Galaxy uh, S3 Mini for 50 bucks, if that's its price. I mean, the thing is, this this device on these specs is, is useless in America. Yeah, unless you're on T-Mobile. No, it doesn't support T-Mobile. Oh, it doesn't. Well, it supports oh, their mind. edge bands, but that's it. I just wonder how it's going to succeed, and I wonder how their prediction like iPhone on T-Mobile are going to be no data or no high-speed data. I uh, Derek, I uh, what's this about the Nexus Four? You know what? I hate that name. Um, so so. Uh, it's let's, short. Let's move on to let's move on to Nexus rumors. So so we have the LG Nexus Four or the LG Nexus G or the LG Optimus Nexus. It's been called a lot of things. Chances are, it's uh, you know we're starting to lean towards the Nexus Four just because we've seen inventory call it the Nexus Four. So. That that's kind of confusing to me, and I even know what the hell I'm talking about, or at least I can act like it pretty well. So we, we have the Nexus One, right? The first Nexus. Then the Nexus Two was you know the, the Nexus S and the Nexus S4G. Um, you know the third Nexus was the the Galaxy Nexus. So the fourth Nexus smartphone would be the Nexus Four. But we also have a Nexus Seven, which wasn't named because it was you know the seventh Nexus device. It was a seven because it was a seven inch device. And the Nexus 4, the LG Nexus, is a 4.7 inch phone, which is basically 5. So I'm confused as hell. I don't like the name Nexus 4. It's going to confuse people that don't know what the hell they're talking about. But then again, most people never heard of a Nexus phone anyway. So, you know, it, it, might, it might end up working out. But yeah, but yeah I... I mean, they're going to bring out a pack of them and it's going to be 4, 5, 6. Well, yeah, if, if that ends up happening, but I just, I don't know, it's a confusing name, I think. Uh, I don't like it, but, but but besides the name, so a, be a Belarusian website, Onliner, decided to leak all sorts of Nexus goodies this past week. First, they started out by, by uh, you know leaking a couple pictures, you know, uh, showing, hey, we have this in our hand. You know, which was better than the previous leaks from a, a Russian forum, actually, that had a whole bunch of blurry pictures. So we liked you know, a little better quality pictures. And then they went crazy and released high-resolution photos. They had a, a full 360-degree spin of the device. So they, they actually have the device in their hand, and they compared it to the iPhone 5, holding the two side by side, you know, hands up in the air, one in one hand, one in the other. They didn't do a drop test, though. Uh, but it was cause, So they, they have the device. It... It, it's coming. I mean, <laughs> they're holding it in their hand. It, it's not. It, this isn't no Photoshop. Um, they also confirmed the specs. So the they said the Nexus uh, Four will come with a 4.7 inch display, which you know we kind of already knew since it's basically an Optimus G. Uh, it's a 1280 by 768 pixels, which is um, unusual. Well, that's 1610, I think. And uh, it has a 1.5 gigahertz quad core Qualcomm processor and two gigs of RAM, which like I said, you know, Optimus G here we're talking about. Uh, it, you know, the internals are, are basically that. The external is not. It's you know, a different shell. It actually, in my opinion, looks like a Galaxy Nexus from the front. If you were to hold the two side by side, stand back a few feet, you're like, huh, there's two Galaxy Nexuses. I mean, that, that's what they look like, in my opinion. Um, Similar enough, but I don't, I don't think it was broken to need to fix it, honestly. I, th I oh, like the look. Oh, yeah, I understand. Uh, now, the, um, the, the pictures that are out there don't show as much curved glass, maybe slightly. And I, I don't know if that's just because it's a picture and I want to see it in my head. You know, I, I, it may be ever so slightly curved glass. Um, the, the back of it is com definitely not the same as the... Uh, you know the Galaxy Nexus. It, it looks completely different. The camera's off to the side, um, and then the back cover. Well, you actually can't even take off the back cover, so that makes it very, very different than the Galaxy Nexus. But the the back cover um, has oh, uh, almost like a, a crystal design pattern matrix thingy. It, it it's pretty neat looking. I think I like it. It, it almost r reminds you of like the live wallpaper that the Nexus One had almost, and, but in like a physical form. Um. Anyways, uh, back to the phone specs. Uh, eight eight megapixel rear facing camera, and they're saying that at least the version they have 
comes with 8 gig of internal storage. So right now, immediately, everyone's going to yell, oh my god, only 8 gig and no SD card. What are we going to do? Well, you know what, maybe this is the incredibly cheap version that they're going to sell in the Play Store for everyone to use, you know, or I'm sorry, everyone to buy. And maybe this will be the $99 version, the $100 version, or you know, whatever. It's going to be, it's going to be really cheap. Um, will we see a 16 gig variant? Well, you know, I'm going to guess, and I'm going to say, yeah, we probably will. Will we see a 32? Yeah, who knows? So, but they're going to have to make something bigger than just a uh, eight. You know, uh, that, that's my opinion. So, um, the, uh, the the Nexus 4 is also rumored to launch, according to a separate website. Um, a French newspaper reported that on October 29th, there's going to be a global launch said, uh, you know, obviously no word from Google on that to confirm, but it's exciting to know that here in just a few weeks it's going to globally launch if the, if that rumor, you know, uh, pans out to be true. But, I mean, as many leaks as we're getting from this, you know, I mean, every day something new leaks from this phone. So it is not a, it's not a well-kept secret. It's definitely coming in. The, the, the fact that more and more things keep leaking means that it's going to come soon. Um, another, another leak this past uh, week, uh, Carphone Warehouse uh, leaked a screenshot of their internal uh, sales system showing that it's called the Nexus uh, 4 and that it comes in black and it also comes in white. So that, that, that's good. I mean, I said, it's just another confirmation that, that it's coming. Um, I can. I, I kind of want to go back to the Nexus 4. Um, are, is it getting to the point where hardware is not what we're looking forward to, not necessarily, but it's all software that we are like, oh, these are new things that we can do? Are you kidding me? Mm-hmm. Have you uh, seen the hardware of this device? No, but uh, yeah, no, I'm, 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 I honestly <laughs> think the Nexus needs hardware more than it needs software at this point, for the, especially for the U.S., no, I, I agree with that, but the thing is, functionality with, with software, like things that are updated, I mean, it, what would be more desirable for y- you guys? A, you know, a, a badass, you know, hardware and lesser software, or better software, lesser hardware? Why can't I have both? No, 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 I, I agree with you there, and that's what we I do. <laughs> well, I think the biggest problem with Google's software isn't, the base operating system anymore as much as it is all the services that they offer that would be updated on the Play Store, like Google Voice needs to be updated, um, you know, converging messaging services, converging news services, and this is all stuff that doesn't really need an operating system upgrade to accomplish. And uh, so for that reasoning, I guess, I'd lean more toward wanting to see, I, I think there are a couple of areas the Galaxy and Nexus needed needs to improve on, like uh, battery life. And, well, battery uh, life and camera. Battery uh, life, camera, and, uh, I mean, you know, obviously speed with newer LG hardware. Has, you know, supposedly new amazing battery technology, you know, so uh, we'll, we'll see where that goes. I, I'm, the I'm, IPS I'm, display will help cut down on battery. They're, yeah, right. especially on Google Apps, because anything with a white background is just murder to an LED display. Okay, so obviously we want things that are better overall, you know, like better screen, better battery life, things like that. But are there anything, any new things that you might add to a device if you could? Like, would wireless charging be something that you would want? If it's there, I'll take it, but it's not something I'd necessarily go out of my way for. Okay. Still got, I mean, you still got to take a plug around just to pick up the core. I mean, yeah, but I mean, I could, I could yeah. you know, plug in the mat by my you know, desk and yeah. possibly it's, phone on my desk is, at night instead of having to plug it in. It's nice to have if you uh, are in a stationary. You know, if I wanted to take a charger to work, it really just right. doesn't it's accomplish not, anything no. more than, you know, it's, it's cool to look at. But Yeah, I, I think that um, wireless charging would be something that as it becomes more universal, just like NFC, mm-hmm. it'll be more of a desirable thing to have. It'll be kind of like a, a no-brainer. You can just people, go to an airport or something and maybe a, a yeah. coffee table in a restaurant and just set your phone down and it you know, takes care of it. Exactly. And that's, if it got standardized to that extent, then it would be worth having. Yeah. 
So let's talk about another Nexus rumor over the past week. Uh, old car phone warehouse. You know, they're they're all about taking screenshots of their internal system and posting them anonymously uh, on the web. Um, it looks like uh, it looks like there's going to be a seven a Nexus seven thirty two gig variant coming out very very shortly that will replace the 16 gig because the 16 gig on another website was listed as end of life so and actually somebody actually bought one i believe they, they bought a 16 gig and they got a 32 gig in the in mail japan. Yeah, in japan so it's definitely coming there somebody accidentally got one so let's let's talk about some very far-fetched rumors based on maybe a few far-fetching facts um motorola occam and Motorola Manta Ray. So over the past week, and actually even in the past, even going even further back, various Android blogs, including ours, uh, Android Authority, we looked at our server logs and we looked at our Google Analytics logs, and we see devices called Occam and Manta Ray. And they're running Android 4.2, apparently. Um, so, so, so why do we think these are Motorola devices? Well, Occam's razor is basically a theory, a line of reasoning stating that the simplest answer is, is most often the correct answer. And so who makes a device that's called a razor? Well, Motorola. So is it, is it a far reach? Yes, but it's not too far, I don't think. Um, the manta ray, well, is that a tablet? Well, you got to look back at Motorola and you say the Stingray and the Wingray. Well, the Stingray and the Wingray were Motorola's Wi-Fi and LTE Zoom. So is, is it going to be the next tablet? Is it going to be the Manta Ray? Well, maybe. But, but also, the Zoom was also referred to as the Manta Ray when it first came out. You know, people were calling it the Manta Ray. So Google slash Motorola could be just testing 4.2 on it. It might not be a completely new device. You know, it's, like I said, it's all speculation. We don't know, but it, it's it's fun to talk about. You know, is it is it a new Nexus tablet? Is it just a Motorola tablet? Is it the same one? Who knows? Is this a new Motorola phone? Is it a Motorola Nexus? Fingers crossed. Confidence probably average. So. I'd, I'd like to see a Motorola Nexus. I'd like for this to turn out to be a Motorola Nexus. You know, Mot Motorola makes, has some great hardware, great GPS, great you know, radios, great signal strength. You know, it's pretty much top of the line when it comes to connectivity. So I, I'd like to see it. Build quality, too. Yeah. You could beat the crap out of somebody with the Zoom, and I don't even think you could dent it. So that's, Good weaponry. It, that's it for Nexus rumors. I mean... I'm, I'm sure next week we're going to have another another big batch of them because we're going to keep reporting them nonstop until the device is actually announced. Wasn't there a rumored launch date for the... Yeah, I was saying that earlier, uh, October 29th. Yeah, so. I mean, if that truly is the launch date for the new Nexus, um, we're going to be getting a lot more stuff very soon. And it, yeah. it'll be a constant flow of rumors, pictures, devices new uh, OS features, stuff like that. It'll be a constant flow, which we love here. All right, so let's a uh, couple quick hits here just to talk about uh, Motorola Razor HD, uh, the, the Droid Razor HD, depending on uh, you know, what you want to call it, and also the Droid Razor Max HD. The official launch date for them, it was finally announced. It's just going to be here in a week, uh, October 18th, which, so if you remember the Thursday. announcement arbitrary a, a while ago, you know, these phones, you know, amazing battery life, great screens, you know, nice hardware. So definitely, definitely, you know, check them out if you're interested in a new film. But definitely be one of the better overall phones as far as for. Like we said, signal quality and data. You won't have to be as, if you're going to lead your family to get one that you don't have to worry about, that's probably going to be the one to take them to. 
Oh, definitely. Um, so let's talk about rooting and ramen. You know, uh, as we said earlier in the show, that Android is now up to 4.1.2. So those of you that are rooting ROM, you want to, you know, you obviously you're not getting any type of over-the-air update from, uh, from, from Google since that functionality was removed in your custom ROM. So where can you get 4.1.2? Well, CyanogenMod, Mod, they're, they're pretty beastly. Uh, the following day after the 4.1.2 announcement, the first nightly yesterday, 1010, that 1010 nightly came with 4.1.2 on nearly every device that had a nightly available, I, I think. As, uh, as well as their Milestone 1 release, or sorry, Milestone 2 or Month 2, depending on what you want to call it, the M series. The M series 2 that was released today is 4.1.2 as well. Bugless Beast is, uh, came out with 4.1.2. Bugless Beast is pretty much a, a stock Android ROM with very, very few changes. You know, there's a, there's a reboot menu, a couple text messages and changes, and, and that's really it. You know, a, a tweak or two to the kernel. I mean, it's it's pretty much stock Android. Uh, great ROM. I used to run it for a very long time before I switched over to, to CM once CM's battery life and lag go, uh, left. So, Bugless Beast is another great ROM that's uh, up to date. And Paranoid Android, well, Paranoid Android is built off of CM, so obviously starting on 10.10, Paranoid Android became 4.1.2 as well. There's a few other smaller ROMs out there, um, but a couple of the other popular ones aren't up to date yet. I'm sure it'll be coming soon, but if you're itching for some 4.1.2, you got to get say, Paranoid Android, Bugless Beast, or Cyanogen Mod now. So there's a few other uh, small ones that, that have it available, but the, the big guys the big guys are, are working at it, as you can see. Um, Twerp, if, you, if you're a Twerp fan, the Team Win Custom Recovery Project, they updated today to version 2.3.0. They had a couple tiny little features and bug fixes. The, the biggest one that I noticed from reading the change log was a charging indicator. Now, it always said that you were, uh, you know, what, what your battery percentage was when you were in Twerk. But now the charging indicator is there, and it's updated every 60 seconds to let you know it, it's actually charging. Um, it was rebased off the latest AOSP code. They added the ADB side load code you know, and faster boot, uh, supposedly, and another few tweaks, like I said. So you might want to go ahead and snag that. You can install it through uh, Goo Manager if you use that. Just uh, you know, install OpenScript Recovery Manager, and it'll go ahead and update that if it's available for your device. And you can also download it and flash it manually if you wish to, to do that. All right, so let's move on to Daniel's favorite section, patent wars. Um, so the appeals court reversed um, the injunction on Samsung Galaxy Nexus in the yes. U.S. Yes, and pretty pretty harshly, actually. <laughs> okay, um, Dan, why don't you summarize it, and then I'll go on into uh, Samsung's response because I love their response. Yeah, so basically they said that Apple couldn't prove that people were buying the Galaxy Nexus because it had search functions or because it had aggregated search functions. They couldn't prove that this particular patent was doing anything in any way, shape, or form to cost them any business whatsoever. So even if it is found to be infringing, the damages aren't going to be reasonable enough to merit an injunction in the first place. So yeah, they basically said that Judge Ko, the woman who's running the, the Samsung versus Apple trial, was <laughs> abusing her discretion and totally rejected the, the injunction. Now, Dan, how did that make you feel, them discrediting her like that and calling her out? Well, it's always nice to see judges not doing their job get told that they're not doing their job. I mean, this <laughs> is the second time in like two weeks that the appeals court has slapped down an injunction out of her court. Now, can there be ramifications for her actions? I don't know. I don't know the particulars of you know exactly where she sits in the court. Okay. She might be in an appointed position, in which case it's an impeachment thing, or you know some appointed positions are for a term, some are for life, some judges are elected. So I I, I just don't I don't know. Because, I mean, one would assume if you rule in the wrong way, um, that's incorrect. Um, 
that's not. Well, I think there are like legal ramifications for that. I mean, potentially you could get disbarred. I would assume. Okay. Well, Samsung responded to um, the reversal and in the injunction on the Samsung Galaxy Nexus. Basically, what they what they said is they said we welcome this reversal by the federal circuit. Finding that the dis district court abused its discretion in order ordering a preliminary injunction against the Galaxy Nexus, today's decision confirms that the role of patent law is to prevent is to protect innovation and not to unreasonably stifle competition and restrict consumer choice. We will continue to take all appropriate measures to ensure the availability of our innovative products. Good statement. Yes. And in, in separate Apple, Samsung, legal nonsense, uh, in the ITC, the International Trade Court, Apple's been basically complaining and accusing Samsung of abusing its obligations under FRAN, Fair, Reasonable, and Non-Discriminatory uh, uh, Restrictions for uh, Standards, Essentials, Patents. And the ITC pretty much just totally rejected every part of Apple's argument just ripped it to pieces. Apple is basically saying, Samsung is, is trying to impose an injunction because we can't come to an agreement on, on, on a fee for these patents. Well, there is a process that's built for that exact problem that Apple completely didn't bother trying to use. They're just going straight to court in an effort to lower the price of the patents. And so the ITC rejected that altogether. Interesting. It's always good to see them. They also, yeah, they also said that Samsung, even under FRAND obligations, has no obligation for their opening offer in a negotiation to be fair and reasonable or non-discriminatory. It's very, it's they very have an obligation to negotiate in good faith. It's very interesting to see a company like that um, trying to overreach and getting denied. Yeah. Well, I mean, part of it is this is how FRAN patent licensing has worked for, for years and years, and Apple is just wading into this and trying to run around saying, no, no, we made up all of this. We're the best. We know everything. But they're building on the back of all of these standards, essentials, patents that they don't have any of, and they don't understand how they work, not just in terms of like the tech of how those pieces of technology function, but they don't understand how the system around those patents works. And their action in the design patent sphere has disrupted things enough that the retaliation is all of these standards, essential patents, and Apple isn't willing to play by the rules. They're trying to play by the rules as they want them to be, but not by the rules as they are. So uh, I don't see how you can make design patents more valuable than the billions of dollars it took to build the cell phone industry. To exactly. With. Well, Eric Schmidt made some comments about what he thought the, the, the patent industry w was doing this week. Yeah, and he was being pretty forward about it. Well, you know, I, I don't really think anybody, uh, well, some people obviously do. I don't think there's too many people at Google, let me rephrase that, that, that think software patents are are the the best thing in the in the world. I think they're, they need to be there, but they need to be there in a different way. Um, so, Derek, you had some things you wanted to touch on? Yeah, just a few miscellaneous stuff here. Uh, well, actually, I mean, it's all related to the Android uh, barbecue that's next week. So, as I said, yeah, the Android barbecue's next week. Um, if you're into collecting Android minis, you know, I have a, oh, I have a few back there in my shrine. Um, you'll be happy to know that there'll be two special editions, special edition for the Android barbecue minis released next week. If you're there, if you're attending the Big Android Barbecue, you'll be able to pick them up for 20 bucks for the set. Uh, they're, they're neat. The one guy has like a, a Hawaiian shirt on and a camera. You know, he's like a tourist almost. You know, he's, he's partying in the, in the summer. The other guy's grilling out on a grill. You know, he's, he's cooking them, you know, hamburgers, hot dogs, uh, steak, you know, barbecue, who knows? You know, maybe barbecue since it is the Android barbecue, I guess. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, he, he's, he's grilling out. It's pretty cool. Um, they're, they're nice. They're, they're very well designed. I like them. Um, like I said, you can pick them up for 20 bucks on site yeah, I, if you're at the barbecue. If you don't attend the barbecue, don't worry. You will have you will have a fair shot like everybody else to mad dash to the 
Dead Zebra website and buy them at exactly 11, what was it, 11 a.m. or 11 p.m.? I'm not sure on the details on that. 11 a.m., I'm going to guess, because that's when the other ones went on sale on October 20th. So, so I'll double check on the details if I'm wrong. But yeah, so start spamming the, uh, the website uh, if you want to pick those up. They're going to go fast, uh, in my opinion. And also, remember last week I made a few references to, oh, a pink gorilla suit. Um, so it looks like that's going to happen. I have <laughs> <laughs> so, so I have friends, enemies, I don't know what to call them, that, that have donated money to this cause. They raised, they raised the entire amount, $180, to buy a $180 pink full-body gorilla fuzzy suit. And apparently it's happening. Uh, fellow Android enthusiast Jody Barnes is going to pick it up in a few days. And yeah, so I'm sure we'll have all sorts of fun video and photos to post from the barbecue of me in that. But I, I can't let them down. You know, if they're they're buying it, I, I jokingly agreed to it. I never thought it would actually happen. But uh, on I a related note, the, base, the basis of this joke turned came from turntable.fm when a whole bunch of us from the barbecue and a whole bunch of Android fans were in there DJing. Well, oh, is that where the monkey suit came that's from? That's where the monkey suit came from. All right, oh. all right, all right quick backstory. Right? It so, all makes sense now. So you need a thousand points to get a gorilla suit. I, I, I don't remember how it got started or all the details. And one of the things was is something like, hey, we should use turntable.fm to DJ at the pool party. And I said something like, oh, you know, maybe by the time the barbecue comes around, I'll be able to be cool and I'll have a thousand points to be a gorilla. And one thing led to another, and I said, well, hey, if I had a gorilla suit, I'd DJ at the barbecue in a gorilla suit. And apparently someone said, well, let's make that happen. Let's find a gorilla suit for you to wear. And I was like, yeah, if you find a suit, I'll wear it. You know, and we were in the moment. It was the heat of the moment. It was a good time until they actually found a pink one and uh, until everybody bid money to actually – Make me wear it. But hey, I'm, I'm going to have a good time. But on a happy note, today I reached 1,000 points on turntable. So now I can truly DJ as a gorilla wearing a gorilla suit. So yeah, we'll, we'll post pictures next week. Derek, that's an amazing accomplishment, by the way. I know, I know. I know. It's, a, it's, a, it's an Android achievement unlocked. Bravo. And, yeah, that's a, that's a, you know what? That, there's going to be a lot of achievements unlocked at the barbecue. That's all I know. I mean, it, there's going to, it's, it's going to be a good time. There's going to be a whole bunch of developers there. There's going to be a whole bunch of fans, a whole bunch of vendors, a whole bunch of swag. A whole bunch of, your uh, Google Plus bragging rights? You know what? I'm going to make. I'm going to go to Schemer since I, I know Schemer's meant for this, right? Go there and put all these things to do at the barbecue and, and share them. Don't shake your head. I'm doing yeah, it. I'm Google already logged in. I'm creating them right now. Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay. All right, guys. Uh, so so uh, let us know what you think of the, the Nexus rumors, the Nexus LG. A lot of people were you know, ranting and raving saying that uh, they don't like it. Then again, then other people are saying, oh, it's amazing. So let us know which side of the fence you're on in the comments. Do you love it? Do you hate it? Uh, are you going to hold out for another one? You know, is there... Is there going to be more devices coming in the next few weeks? Are we going to see the HTC 5, fingers crossed, confidence high, that's what Derek wants? Uh, the, you know, the Nexus 5, if that comes to fruition. So, all right. Also, I, I do want to know, what features would you have in your ideal phone? Um, that'd be kind of cool. Things that you couldn't, that you would maybe use or everybody would use in, in the future. Um, so for all of our viewers and listeners, um, some places you can find us. Basically, we are live every Thursday night at 8.30 <laughs> Central Time. Dan, and... I, I, I'm sorry. I, I didn't mean to interrupt, but uh, when I was talking about my Android shrine, Dan made a comment saying that I worship the shrine three times a day, always facing Mountain View. That's actually that was like funny. so five minutes ago. <laughs> <laughs> there That's hilarious. That's hilarious. Okay, so for, for those of you guys who are uh, you either down listening... The comments, you'll enjoy <laughs> For those of you who are listening or watching, um, we're available on YouTube. You can watch us on YouTube. Um, you can watch the live stream there every Thursday night at 8.30 Central Time. Um, also, if you want to join in the discussion, if you're commenting on the YouTube uh, page, that's fine. Uh, most of the, of the discussion actually happens on ha is happening on Google+, on the Android Authority page on Google+. 
and th there you can ask questions, and uh, we're watching that stream more than the YouTube comment stream. Um, also, you guys can listen to us on SoundCloud if you don't want to look at us, um, because, you know, we're not really that good to look at. Um, <laughs> some more so than others. Um, but we're available on SoundCloud. You can download uh, the podcast or you can listen to it and stream it there. Uh, we're available on Stitcher Radio. That's a, a mobile app. Also, you can get us on iTunes, and we also do have an RSS feed. And if you do go to androidauthority.com, if you come to the bottom right, on the bottom right side, there is an on-air section. That is where we post all of our news and all of our show notes for every episode. Okay? All right, so, uh, you know, I'm, I'm that guy. I, you know, we're trying to wrap up, it, but I'm going to keep talking. I'm that guy. Um, so, so Yusef a asked us some questions here, and he's asked twice, and uh, I feel that we need, we need to answer them real quick. So I have another minute or two. I'm sure you guys aren't going anywhere. You're not doing anything else. So, all right, so uh, he wants to know what's up with the YouTube app. Um, we actually talked about this last week. Um, YouTube app, remember that it's now kind of like Google Plus. You scroll up and down instead of swiping left to right to see comments, related videos, and all that good stuff. I personally hated it. John and Scott, I think, liked it. Um, I don't know, you guys still feel that way? You like the new YouTube app design still? Yeah. Still a fan? It, it, it needs more features, but yes, it is nice and it's very fast. I like, then, I like scrolling better than swiping. I, yeah, I don't know. I was used to swiping. Like I said, I'm eventually going to get used to it, and I'll, you know, two months from now, I'll tell, I'll come back and I'll say this is the most amazing thing ever. Don't ever change it. But right now, I'm not a fan. And then, and then Yusuf also was asking questions about uh, the, um, Apple recently expanded their patent coverage on Slide to Unlock. Like with Slide to Unlock, the original patents were were just you know basically slide from left to right to unlock in a, in a straight line. I mean, that's basically all it said. The new one basically says, hey, you can slide to unlock from anywhere in a whole massive direction. It, it, it's a very, very broad feature, and almost saying that, you know, you'd think that, I, I'm not a patent lawyer, but um, I, I, I wouldn't assume that jelly beans uh, slide to unlock, you know, it's not really even a slide, you know, push in the middle and flick to a ring to unlock, but whatever. I, I would assume it's safe, um, but... I wouldn't it, from the way it's worded, but I also don't think it'll matter. I don't. I don't think it's going to hold up. It. It. it it's way too. There, there, there's prior cases. Yeah. Of I mean, it. the thing that Apple seems to have forgotten, taking Apple out of the equation, forty percent of patents that get tried and tested fail. As in, forty percent of all patents that are grant, granted to the world are complete trash. So, so Dan, is that like eighty-seven percent of uh, statistics are made up on spot, or is no? That that's like according to court documents and court records. I don't want to see your source on that, Dan. Well, I'm I would assume sure that they, law. <laughs> I, I would assume that a lot of companies just apply for very broad patents because exactly. if they, it, because if they and do the, get a broad patent, then they have some type of footing to stand behind. And once they get that footing, and then they get another patent that is relatively similar then they have more ground in that area to defend yeah. themselves, which is ridiculous. Well, I mean, the thing is, patents are supposed to be used defensively, and I think that... And they're not being used I, I think that the, the Patent and Trade Office hasn't woken up to the fact that they're handing out weapons. Very broad... Yeah, weapons. they're handing out corporate weapons that these companies are taking, and not just Apple and Samsung, but patent trolls and Microsoft and everybody. They're handing out baseball bats that these companies are just beating the crap out of each other with. So the thing is, um, the Galaxy S3 with the uh, unlock with the, the, the water theme or whatever, um, this patent says from the first uh, location to an unlock region, it needs to be a predefined unlock region. Um, you can do the S3 anywhere, um, so that patent would would not hold up against the S3. Yeah, I also think this particular patent has been rejected several times before. But hey, the little engine that could, keep trying. And that's the other thing, is you just keep putting a patent application in, and it goes to a different examiner every time, and eventually one of them is just rubber stamping, rubber stamping, rubber stamping, because they get paid by the approval, not by, you know, the quality of their work. Very true. 
Okay, so guys, we're going over time. Um, once again, just kind of want to say we are available on YouTube, SoundCloud, Stitcher, iTunes, RSS feed, bottom right of the site, AndroidAuthority.com. And also, if you want to comment and enjoy the show and comment with us, Google Plus page of Android Authority. Have a good night. Have a good night, everybody. Take care, guys.